Back to the oral hygiene uh, story. Have you brushed your teeth this morning? That's right. Are you feeling a little bit uh, uh, queasy because I've just caught you out? It's a lot more important than you think. And if there's kids watching, it's not just because mom and dad are trying to annoy you. It's studies have found that bad oral hygiene can be linked to cancer, to heart failure and hypertension as well as renal failure. I don't know if this is actually possible. Uh, now, let's a result of a study by the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Well, now let's find out how we actually got to this point and why we should all be a little bit scared uh, this morning. Uh, joining us to talk about it, uh, Professor Glenda Mary Davison uh, from the university. Prof, good to have you with us. Now that I've sufficiently scared all the kids watching TV at the moment, I always thought this was a pet issue. Like for, for you know, domesticated dogs, this was something, if you don't look after their teeth, they start getting kidney infections, etc. Tell me about this. How severe can this actually get? Well, I think one of the, the biggest important things to know is that bacteria is quite normal in our mouth and it lives there like a very well-balanced ecosystem. But it's when it gets unbalanced and this can occur through a change in environment such as high glucose levels or um, a change in pH and when you get a high levels of certain bacteria and they can cause gum disease such as periodontitis we then can get what we call chronic inflammation that can enter into our systems, our bodies, and the result of this chronic inflammation can, mm. of course, lead to disease in all organs. Mm. Um, and the other way we have found is that these bacteria also secrete toxins. Um, bacteria do that. And in a chronic uh, situation where you've got bleeding gums and the, the bone is eroded away, those toxins can enter our blood systems and our bodies. So looking after your teeth and ensuring that that balance of bacteria is kept normal and healthy is very important. I just want to make sure I understand, when we're talking about the kind of bad oral hygiene that you're referring to, uh, this is not someone who maybe skips a day and doesn't brush their teeth for one day a week. This is somebody who habitually never brushes their teeth. Am I, am I correct in that? I don't, want to, I don't want to scare anybody unnecessarily. No, you're quite correct. This is over a period of time. Um, so it's not somebody who misses brushing their teeth today. Um, so over a period of time, if you neglect your teeth and you are smoking, drinking alcohol, and the environment over a period of time in the mouth changes, um, that is what we are talking about. That can lead to um, gum disease and, of course, from gum disease, these other, other problems. I, I imagine then you mentioned there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria as well. So now I also don't want people to now go the other way and start chugging back half a litre of mouthwash every morning because <laughs> you could also create a problem by not trying to fix a problem that isn't there. Absolutely. And in fact, a research has been done to say that if you do use uh, these mouthwashes on a regular basis, that in itself can disrupt that bacterial balance. So it's important to not go the other way because we need that bacteria. That bacteria plays a very big role in maintaining health. So um, the thing is to be balanced about it, I suppose. Look after your teeth, look out for the signs, and take action. But yes, don't go uh, the other way. Uh, and thankfully, I've got a, pro a professional like you, Professor, to help me understand this. Uh, beginning of this discussion, you mentioned uh, glucose levels are important. I immediately went straight to diabetes. Am I on the right track? Yes, you are on the right track. And in fact, the, the research project that we did at um, our research unit, the Cardiometabolic Health Research Unit, in fact, we studied diabetic patients. That's how we came across this imbalance because we found that people who had diabetes but also in the pre-diabetic stage, when they've just got glucose intolerance, mm. we found that there was a shift in the bacteria, um, the balance of the bacteria in the mouth. So this is what has led us to study this further 
and to find out more about how high glucose levels in fact affect our oral health and what comes first is it our the imbalance in our oral health or mm. is it the diabetes Mm, yeah, which one is it, the cause or the effect? It's an interesting discussion uh, to have one day it's, as well. I'm curious, when you say that you came upon this because of this kind of research, uh, because you were looking at uh, diabetes and glucose levels, is this being researched anywhere else in the world? Is this a fairly well-known fact or is this still quite uncommon uh, in, the, in the health fraternity? Look, it has been very well researched with the gut. As you well know, we have bacteria in our gut. They call it the gut biome. And uh, it's well known that if there's an imbalance there, you also get similar problems. Now, the mouth is the entry point to our guts and to our bodies. So it is another whole ecosystem that we felt was very relevant mm. to the rest of the body. Other people have studied it, but not in African regions or in, in South Africa. You, I was about to ask you about Africa and South Africa, and I'm glad you, you phrased it that way, that there's a focus on mm. this continent. How bad is it uh, in our country? I mean, give me a sense uh, of just how bad this is in the research you found. Is this fairly common or is it still very, very niche? Well, we have studied um, the uh, uh, populations in the Western Cape, and it's fairly niche for that. We haven't gone to other parts of the country, and I think that is a future research project mm. to actually take um, to other populations in other parts of, of South Africa and even Africa. Um, but our study focused on, on the Western Cape, and it is uh, quite prevalent. And we also know that diabetes and cardiovascular risks are on the increase in South Africa. Africa. Um, I think that has been well described. So these studies aim to look at the causes of this. Mm. What are, are the environmental factors like what we eat, our nutrition that is predisposing us to um, elevated risks of diabetes. Yeah, I suppose there could be a discussion, Prof. Maybe we can have it again one day when you're talking about diet, automatically we're going to talk about the economy and income of families because often uh, we know healthy food is actually very expensive. It shouldn't be, but it is. But maybe that's a discussion for another day. Prof, last question then. I can hear the parents busy shouting at me to ask you to scare their kids a little bit. The little one who doesn't want to brush his or her teeth before going to bed. So the platform is yours as I say goodbye. Don't give them nightmares, but scare them a little bit. Well, I do think from a very young age, looking after your teeth and your oral health is important. And to watch out for the signs. So if you start getting bleeding gums, um, red swollen gums in your children, in your teenagers and even into adult life, it's time to go to the dentist. Mm. And maybe my last word should be that, regular dental checkups, because they can pick up these signs very quickly, quicker than, than you can. Yeah. And, and then something can be done about it. Yeah, it's gotten a lot more serious than just a filling if you enjoy your sweets and chocolates. Prof, good to talk to you. Would love to talk to you about this again one day on the economic side uh, of this. Associate Professor uh, from Cape Peninsula University of Technology. It's Prof Glenda uh, Mary Davis. So now that we've managed to scare your kids sufficiently, uh, they're not going to want chocolates again uh, for the next couple of weeks. So